As a car reviewer, it seems like every day someone comes up to me asking the same question. What's your favorite sports car, huh? Naturally assuming the answer is Ferrari, McLaren, Lamborghini, or some other overpriced novelty piece, my answer typically comes as a surprise. Because in my opinion, the finest sports car on the market, regardless of price point, is right behind me. As you might expect, that affection spreads evenly to the Boxster's fixed roof sibling. But no matter your preferred roof style, the 718's appearance is one of its primal and performance bests. Subtly gorgeous yet instantly eye-catching, the design is just as functional as it is attractive. It may come as a shock, but the 718 is genuinely practical. In addition to a decent amount of cabin storage, the mid-engine layout allows for the inclusion of a generously sized frunk, as well as a usable trunk. Okay, the Cayman's trunk lid is more of a lift back, but the functionality story remains the same. Peering in closer reveals a cockpit lined almost entirely by soft touch materials and fitted together with craftsmanlike artistry. The seating situation transforms from middling to marvelous by way of an upgrade to the highly recommended 18-way power buckets, which feature adjustable shoulder and leg bolsters as well as thigh extensions. Generous legroom and headroom combined with a long throw steering wheel provides comfortable accommodations for drivers up to 6 foot 4, though getting in and out of the car is a different story. That is, assuming you've got knees of a baby giraffe, like yours truly. Porsche's long-standing battle with technophobia has finally been cured as well, as evidenced by the completely revamped PCM infotainment system's blisteringly fast reactions, clean menu layouts, proximity sensors, and optional Apple CarPlay integration. Sadly, due to outmoded privacy concerns, Porsche has yet to embrace Android Auto. Big Brother issues aside, the 718's fundamental appeal is on the road. Of course, the biggest news here is the switch from naturally aspirated flat six-cylinder engines to turbocharged fours. Among the enthusiast community, four-cylinder engines are generally regarded as inferior products due to their outmoded association with boring, soulless economy cars. If there ever was a turbo four that could finally put to rest these negative connotations, it's this one. Thanks to a user-friendly torque curve, the 718 delivers strong, usable power from about 3,500 RPM all the way up to the 7,500 RPM redline, meaning quick overtaking maneuvers on the highway no longer requires that notorious 6.4 downshift. You know, if you're driving a manual, which you probably aren't. That manual gearbox also happens to be one of the most engaging six-speed units ever to grace a right arm. And as far as automatics go, Porsche's seven-speed PDK transmission, which stands for, uh, Leica? Porsche Doppelkupplungsgrasiebe. Thank you. Is, in our opinion, the finest dual-clutch gearbox available. Not only are its communication and shift times essentially zero, but PDK is also remarkably smooth in normal driving conditions. Both units come connected to either a 300-horsepower turbocharged 2-liter flat 4 or larger 2.5-liter mill good for 350 horsepower and 309 pound-feet of torque in higher-performing S variants. When equipped with the PDK Automatic, the Porsche 718 and 718S can dash from 0 to 60 in 4.5 and 3.9 seconds respectively. Better yet, our PDK-equipped Cayman tester returned an average of 34.7 mpg on the highway in real-world conditions at an average speed of 71 miles an hour topping the EPA score by roughly four marks. So, rousing output figures are all well and good, but how do the flat fours sound? It may not emit the high-pitched wail of its predecessor, but as you approach the upper RPM range, the flat four's deep bass baritone steps aside to produce this gloriously raucous shriek. It kind of sounds like Barry White just sat on a thumbtack. The steering is so impeccably precise and responsive that it feels like it's always one step ahead of you. And the same goes for the brakes. The suspension is compliant enough to absorb rough pavement, and the chassis, while slightly stiffer than the Cayman, is a masterpiece of metallurgy. 
you feel this tremendous rigidity in the structure that somehow doesn't translate into a jarring, noisy ride. The Boxster further elevates the 718's visceral appeal by way of a power-operated soft top capable of deploying or retracting in about 10 seconds at speeds up to 35 miles an hour. Plus, many convertibles obstruct your outward visibility by placing the windshield header directly over your head, making your drop top feel more like a giant sunroof. This is a true open air experience. At this point, we've made it clear that the 718 can basically do no wrong. But like most things that seem too good to be true, there's a catch. And in this case, it's the price. Then again, this caveat only applies if you go nuts with individual options and interior customization. And while doing so can nearly double the 718's starting price, six-figure Boxsters and Caymans still look, drive, and feel as their sticker price suggests. Base models lack basics like power seats, adjustable lumbar support, digital climate controls, and even leather, but they do include bi-xenon headlights, a deployable rear spoiler, a universal garage door and gate opener, front and rear parking sensors, a backup camera, and a six-speaker audio system tied to a seven-inch touchscreen infotainment center. The larger brakes, wheels, and extra power found in uptuned S models carry a $12,400 premium, while adding in traditional trappings like a full leather interior, dual zone automatic climate control, passive entry with keyless start, the aforementioned heated and ventilated 18-way seats, the heated steering wheel, adaptive cruise control, and rain sensing windshield wipers will tack an additional $11,000 to the bottom line. Audiophiles are confronted with two options, a mid-tier 10-speaker sound system by Bose, or high-end Burmester system featuring 12 speakers and additional equalizer controls. Performance add-ons consist of a speed-dependent steering system, torque vectoring control that brakes the rear wheels for increased agility, carbon ceramic brakes, a sport-tuned exhaust with an electronically controlled baffle, a two-mode adaptive suspension system, and Porsche's Sport Chrono package, which adds dynamic engine mounts, four driving modes including an individual setting, rev match downshifts, and launch control and PDK models. The bottom line here is that some judicious checking of options boxes will leave you with a well-equipped 718 and a roughly $75,000 hole in your pocket. Thankfully though, the 718 is expected to retain some of the strongest residual values in the category, owed in no small part to Porsche's growing reputation for quality and reliability. Owning something with near-perfect driving dynamics, exceptional fit and finish, and a comparatively high degree of practicality does not come cheap. But if dollars and cents have but a small impact on your appreciation for the finer things in life, you cannot do much better than the 718 Boxster and Cayman. Hey Zach, 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 what's your favorite sports car, Zach? Is it this one? Is it a Ferrari Zach or a Bugatti? I like Maserati. Does mm. this one come in white? Mm -hmm. You want to see my scrap with the famous fast cars? This is a nice one. Tell me, Zach, have you ever driven a Honda?